stand out market today is the Hong Kong market. It's up around 1.5%. Resistance for the Nifty comes in at 19,605. Basically, the 19,600 level around where the markets kind of uh, found support earlier. A citizen's uh, uh, MPC, which we conduct, also said uh, no action. Bajaj Finance has taken a board approval to raise about 10,000 crore. Depending on the distance that you travel, you'll have to pay an additional charge uh, for the fuel. 60 points higher on the Nifty. The mid-cap index is up 180 odd points. I think the markets clearly have been much stronger than anyone anticipated. Decided unanimously to keep the policy repo rate unchanged at 6.5%. This has come as a surprise to the market because people were not expecting almost sales. Markets have started moving higher, half a percent up on the benchmark indices. The Nifty is now at 19,650s. To seek the regulatory approval when it comes to uh, the second tranche of this transaction under which uh, Axis Bank buys nearly about 7% stake. As a EM central banker, what are your fears? What are your tools? No, you see, our uh, bond yields, uh, domestic bond yields are uh, reacting to domestic factors. In fact, at least 20,000 people and over 3,000 tourists are said to be stranded. We have the mid-cap index, which is up around half a percent. Well, that was the day so far, uh, and it's been a good day for markets, uh, for stock markets, that is. Not so much for bonds. We'll come to that in just a bit. We're coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Moti Roosevelt Studios. I'm Prashant with me. My colleagues Reema and Surabhi. Guys, hi. Good afternoon. Uh, Nigel, of course, is joining us from the newsroom floor as well. Uh, so, you know, I want to start with not uh, what's happening with uh, stocks, but bonds. I mean, I think it's almost gone in a way unnoticed. Uh, we've got a very sharp... Uh, we've been talking about US bond deals, right? But look at the tenure uh, in India, uh, which is... Uh, I don't think that is updating. No, that is not updating. Uh, but uh, the India tenure has risen to 7.35. I mean, the last I checked before Three I walked nine, in. Prashant. I'm just looking at the ticker right now. 7.39 now. This uh, is the old paper, the old tenure. Yeah. The 7.26 uh, 2033 paper. I was paper. talking about the, the new one is it was about 7.35. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but in any case, I mean, the, the new one, uh, the close yesterday was 7.21. From 7.21, we've moved to about 7.35. Uh, so that's a very large move that we're seeing. And that's got nothing to do with, I mean, uh, nothing has happened in the U.S. Uh, bond market or anything of that sort. It's very much to do with what the governor said. Uh, and uh, the big big reaction has come in a little lagged. So what, what did the governor, governor say? He said that the RBI may have to conduct uh, open market sales. Uh, the aim is largely to tighten liquidity. The worry has been that banks flush with a lot of liquidity have been reluctant to uh, lend to lower rated credit. Uh, you know, they've been accepting uh, lower yields by parking money with the Reserve Bank of India. And uh, the, the RBA wants to take some of this excess liquidity out, uh, uh, out of the system, basically asking banks to meet in the middle. Uh, the aim is to basically smoothen out uh, liquidity, inter-bank liquidity in that sense. Uh, but uh, there is a very discernible impact which is coming through on uh, yields as such. Markets, stock markets, uh, unaffected. So far, at least, we've got a solid 100-point rally. Uh, which I think is there. Uh, now, in terms of levels, uh, the up, on the upside, and this is a level we put out over the last couple of days, 19,726. We're pretty close by, actually, now, with the rally that we've seen. Uh, Bank Nifty, we can talk about it a little later. Mid-caps and small caps are doing just fine. Indices are up about 0.6% each. And, of course, uh, all of this will culminate in that big data point, which we will get right before U.S. markets open, which is the monthly uh, jobs figure. And uh, let's just hope that uh, in a way, it hits the sweet spot, neither too hot, neither too cold, and uh, just right. Maybe too much to ask, but uh, I think that's going to be the big one, especially for U.S. bond markets as well. Uh, but we'll try and get you more uh, sort of clarity and uh, what's really going on in bond markets here as well as we go on. But uh, afternoon, Prima. Hi, afternoon. So just reading out what the Namura economist has said on yeah. this OMO. Uh, RBI has surprised with the threat of potential OMO sales in the future. The key word is May. If India gets more capital inflows, which adds to the durable liquidity, then OMO sales would give RBI the ability to fine-tune the liquidity. Importantly, the intention of this statement is also to prevent the markets from rejoicing from a status quo policy today. And instead, the OMO sale threat 
is used as a signaling tool to send a hawkish message in their view. This will also keep markets on the tender hooks during a surplus liquidity period adds to the uncertainty. So the RBI has threatened with potential OMO sales and that perhaps is what the market is reacting. But X of that, as Prashant pointed out, it's been a good Friday for the equity market. Two good days on the trot. Um, uh, the Nifty in a span of two days has added close to about 130 points. The global setup has also been largely positive. You had a percent and a half plus point of kind of a rally in Hang Seng. Europe right now is holding up with gains of close to about a half or percent. Back home, you've got the NBFCs rallying. So Bajaj Finance, FinServ were the big gainers. But outside of that, in the mid-cap space, Ujivan Small Finance Bank, l and Finance holding. These are stocks where you are seeing good gains. Real estate has rallied close to a percent and a half in terms of the Nifty Real Estate Index. Uh, and other notable movers in the large cap include Titan and ITC. No, no, I really want to hold on to the optimistic side of things because it is a Friday. Uh, and yes, like you mentioned, I think global markets are uh, being very optimistic right now going into the event, which is a non-farm payrolls uh, print that will be released later this evening. The expectation is that somewhere we should see about 170,000 jobs get added in, um, in the US in the month of September. Uh, rates, at least internationally, are steady. The US tenure is still around 4.7%, not too much move. The dollar is steady. And there's some green on European screens right now. <clears throat> as well as on U.S. futures. So markets really hoping that they'll not be in for any kind of a nasty surprise. It'll be somewhere around that zone of 170 to 180,000 perhaps in terms of the number of job additions. So the global picture is holding up. Back home, mid-caps are holding up. That's the other uh, good aspect of today's trading action. Look at the advanced decline ratio here at home. You have almost 2,000 stocks advancing, less than 1,000 stocks declining. And that index is pretty much at the peak of the session. So mid-caps are having a good run. I'll give just some examples out here. Uh, the financials are doing very well, even in mid-caps. Reema mentioned the Bajaj twins on the Nifty. Look at stocks like Ujivan Small Finance Bank, LNT Finance Holding, JNK Bank. Uh, so there's a fair amount of green on the financial side of it. Outside of financials, NBCC, IRB Infra, uh, these are some of the names that are, uh, that are doing really well. You go a little beyond, I mean, to the smaller cap side of the screen, and there's a lot of excitement and flutter. Kalyan Jewelers, for instance, would be a case in point. Stocks up now, what, almost 10%. Uh, you, know, you have Quick Heal. So a lot of these small cap names are having a pretty good Friday afternoon as well. So Nigel, I guess I mean, local bonds are a bit of a scare. But otherwise, it's, it's a pretty good looking screen. I think the bulls will, will be happy if this remains intact over the next one hour. Yeah, I think uh, a, a better reaction could come in in terms of the bond uh, bond yield spike, uh, you know, on Monday itself. But for the time being, as you said, the markets are looking quite good. And particularly the broader markets, which had a bit of a pause yesterday. Some of the stocks in the broader markets pull up GSPL. You know, that one, in fact, has spiked up in the last few minutes. The stock was trading in the red. So GSPL comes up for you on the screen. GMR airports as well. Air traffic is likely to pick up from your run. And that stock is looking rock solid. And DLF is the other one as well. So a few of those names, they continue with their good run, uh, as we've seen. And some of these stocks are trading with rather large volumes. So stock specific action continues. And good to see that the Nifty is gradually moving towards the near-term upper end of the bar, which comes in at around 19,700-odd. Mitesh Shakar is with us. Uh, hi, Mitesh. Uh, what's your view on the markets? I mean, uh, we continue to build on as the session progresses. I think earlier this morning you were telling us 19,725. That's the crucial mark you'll be looking at. How are you positioned now in the Nifty? Good uh, afternoon, Nigel. I think that still remains the key level to watch out for, 19,725. But, you know, on the stock specific side, we've been trading with more of long bias, given that a lot of stocks are giving breakouts. And uh, the fear of or the, you know, the worry of uh, declining trend is at least uh, in the short term arrested because we have had a gap up yesterday and we have had a gap up today. And both the cases, the market did not try to fill the gap. So I think at least it may become choppy, but I don't think there'll be a big stretching uh, or a, you know a declining movement on the on the on the expanding side. So I think this is a market which might either chop around or maybe try to inch higher and try and record a breakout above 19725. So with that, the stock positioning is on the long side. I have DLF as one of the recommendations. Just managed to get past the earlier closing highs of 535, 540 zone. So it's just trading above that. So keep a stop below uh, 534 and a target of 565 can be looked at. And Bajaj Finance, I think you, know, you couldn't have missed that stock today, making a fresh all-time high. It's been trading with a positive structure, but today I think the candlestick is very, very uh, powerful and this should see more continuation. So I would give a buy with a stop below 8050 for targets of around 8350. Mm. Uh 
Thanks, uh, Mitesh, for joining in. Prakash Thivan is with us on the show. Prakash, uh, Bajaj Finance, right? Uh, that's clearly the stock of the day. 4% up on that. FinServe, its parent company, has rallied uh, 6%. I remember we, you know, chatting on this when the company had announced that there is a board meeting which is scheduled uh, where they will be looking at a fundraise of a large size, 10,000 crore. It's happened. Um, you know, from here on, uh, where do you see the stock headed? Uh, good afternoon, Rima. So, I think this is this is exactly like a copybook expansion phase that uh, Bajaj Finance is undertaking. Uh, we, we've seen it kind of consolidate its operations, even with some sort of a slowdown on AUM growth and you know new acquisition of uh, customers and all. They've they've been able to tide over that, and in a phase where you know cost of funds becomes fairly critical to decide on you know the kind of margins that they could clock uh, going forward, they've they've been able to manage a decent fundraise uh, at the right time in my view uh, which which can which can propel growth to a very significant level given that we are getting into a little bit of a more uh, favorable cycle on the consumption side so I, I you know it's it's difficult to kind of perfectly time where you get into bajaj finance because from a valuation perspective it has always been trading at premium so i always recommend you look at this to buy on bad days or in bad phases, not on the days when there's good news. Right now, you might not have a very great uh, risk reward favorably in the sense that the risk is low, but then the reward is also low. So from that angle, it's probably going to be a bit range bound till uh, all the way to 86, 8700. But then on the downside also, it, I think it's it's done its bit uh, in consolidation to so protect it. So hold on to it, but it's it's not something which is a buy at this point in time, given any of the changes that are happening in the market or specifically on the stock. Okay, oh, got that. Uh, Prakash, stay on. We'll have more questions for you in just a bit. Let's look at some stocks that have been in the news today as well. Now, CNBC TV18 has learned that MCX may have got a SEBI panel's approval to shift to that uh, new technology platform. Our colleague Sudarshan has been, uh, you know, getting us a lot of these, uh, you know, details. He's been talking to a lot of sources. Sudarshan, so what is the latest on this tech platform saga with MCX? Yes, that's right. So what we understand from sources that SEBI's technical advisory panel has approved MCX proposal to shift to new platform and that decision has been taken in the last meeting that SEBI's technical advisory panel had. So just let's talk about what's the issue and what exactly happened over the last two weeks. So the new platform that MCX wants to shift to is being serviced by TCS for which MCX and TCS uh, TCS had signed agreement in 2021 and currently MCX uses the platform of 63 moves for which the agreement is expiring by the end of December. So now three months in advance of that expiry of that agreement, MCX wanted to shift to the new platform of TCS and for which on September 28, MCX announced that by, from October 3, it will be shifting to the new platform. But within a day of that announcement, SEBI came, with, SEBI came with an announcement saying that, no, you have to put that proposal in abeyance. Now, what was the reason of that? Chennai Financial Markets and Authority, that's the Chennai-based association, community association, moved Madras High Court filing the writ petitions again regarding technical issue in the new platform. But... Meanwhile, now SEBI's Technical Advisory Committee met last week and said, no, so uh, they have decided that MCX can shift to the new platform. Okay, got that. Uh, thanks very much for the details there. So that's the latest on MCX and its uh, technology twist, so to speak. Um, uh, Prakash, let me ask you, but this has been a drama that's been playing out for the last couple of weeks now, actually some months, uh, whether they're moving to this, uh, what, what seems like it's going to be a TCS-backed platform or not. The stock has done exceptionally well this year. There's no taking away from that. What would you advise on MCX? Uh, look at it, stay away, buy, sell, hold. What's the view? So, you know, Sabi, uh, the, the performance of the stock, in spite of all these tailwinds, tell you how critical uh, this business is to, to the growth of the financial markets or the economy as a whole. I mean, it has a very, very critical role that it plays and you can't ignore that and hence you can't ignore the stock as well so it's very clear at some point in time now the timelines are not very clear and they've been given uh, you know getting this extension all the time tcs has probably been taking more time than what is warranted and it's cost them quite a bit so all that damage is probably priced in my sense is there's a little bit of that hope of recovery in terms of uh, the catch-up that it could play 
the volumes that are waiting to to be kind of priced into the stock's performance are, are I think very very stellar. My sense is this is probably the only business uh, that hasn't got re-rated in this last 12 months of a bull run on on a lot of financial intermediaries or financial network uh, opportunities. So this is this is definitely a stage where it could probably spring up and and spring a surprise and still do well. Uh, but yeah, the only the only uh, uh, spoiler would probably be if the if the transformation of the technology platform takes still longer and it gets so difficult for them to kind of revive themselves and lose out on revenue. But if that doesn't happen, I think definitely there is there is enough opportunity for MCX to make some good money. Okay, uh, you know, uh, Prakash, stay with us uh, because uh, we're going to from stock markets also look at the bond markets which are. Uh, reacting to uh, you know the announcement that the governor essentially is uh, talking about uh, OMO sales of government paper. Lata is here. We've seen a pretty large reaction in yields, uh, Lata. Uh, your take, How, what do you re what's your reading? Well, actually, the RBI did exactly as was expected in terms of policy. They have not changed the rate or the stance that was expected to be retained, and everybody knew they would do something to alert us about liquidity. You know, there were various guesses, maybe some kind of diluted CRR, maybe a 10 basis repo hike, uh, maybe just statement, you know. No one expected a bond sale. I mean, it is a complete out-of-the-box uh, announcement from Reserve Bank. And there is a half-year borrowing program left. Government will sell those, you know, three and a half lakh crore bonds. And RBI will also sell. I mean, what is the incentive for a bank to buy those bonds? when you know that something more is going to be sold and as it is there is enough negativity because of crude prices because of us bond yields there is a, you know chipping away of the prices this is a completely unexpected uh, move and when i specifically asked him sir is it screen based selling no they've been selling in the last about 3 4 weeks they've sold about 5000 crore of bonds on the screen ccil screen uh, will it be a screen based as you've been doing or will it be an auction he very clearly said no it's an auction and auctions, you know, 10,000 crore, 20,000 crore, they're big ones. So markets like shocked, stupefied. And you can see the reaction. Uh, this is not going to be very bank negative. Of course, there will be a mark to market impact, but they may not have to raise deposit rates just yet. But those who are borrowing from the bond market, who? NBFCs. I'm a little surprised that uh, NBFC stocks haven't reacted just yet. Uh, and PNB Gilts is actually up when I last checked. Uh, likely to be impacted. Uh, in terms of their bond book and uh, unless there are some other mitigating factors for that stock, NBFCs definitely will see a rise in the cost of money if they go to raise ab in issue. Uh, this, is, this is negative. So, Lata, what could be the possible reason? I mean, could it just be that global yields are high and we're talking about this near 5% on the US tenure and what could be the thought process behind looking at doing a bond sale now and that too through the auction route as you said? They want to tighten liquidity. See, they want to go after inflation and although they don't say that, mm -hmm. they do want to keep interest rates high. They put it, you know, in, the legal, in their language, in the jargon, as aligned with our policy. So, well, our policy is to bring in, uh, inflation down to 4%. So for that, you can do anything. They just say it's aligned to policy and we are not using uh, OMO to defend the currency against uh, the uh, rupee, uh, against the dollar's rally. That was... You know, we ask that same question in so many ways. Is this a reply to the fact that, you know, if U.S. bonds give you 5% return, what is the incentive for someone remitting money to put it in a 7% Indian bond? Because you will lose on currency. This is a risk-free return of 5%. So at the margin, you will not bring in the money, right? And I did a piece uh, before uh, the policy where we had the BOP figures, balance of payments figures, and remittances have been falling from the high of October, November, December, it fell in Jan, Feb by, uh, Jan, Feb, March by $1 billion and again by in uh, April, May, June by $1 billion. It's been falling. Is it so attractive to keep money in the U.S.? Not it's, a little, it's a little attractive. Mm -hmm. So while you will bring mm -hmm. money here for other reasons, because your stocks will give you much better return than maybe 5%, mm -hmm. but there is a competition yeah. from the risk-free <laughs> return. I, and I heard you ask that question, at, uh, you know, I think repeatedly, twice repeatedly, yeah. but he said, well, this is domestic. This is, we are addressing the domestic situation, not the uh, global situation. Yeah. No, they're right but, that but we're very comfortable yeah. and we've got a, a bonds, uh, money coming about yeah. starting but liquidity, June and all that. Uh, Lata, just to ask another point, liquidity, uh, you know, seasonally anyway tightens, right? Because there's so much spending Obviously now, we're getting into the festive season. Obviously, so, they think it's not enough. 
Okay. I mean, we can only conclude from yeah, their yeah. behavior. But they haven't said they will, right? Normally, when they say, "Oh, absolutely," they said they may. No. <laughs> oh, I, That's I, why that if you ask them points. whether you will do it on screen or you will do an auction, <laughs> no, I will do auction. That is a will. Well, that is a may about. Let me let me get in Lakshmi Ayer as well. Uh, Lata is of course with us as well. Uh, she is uh, CEO Investment and Strategy at Kotak Alternate uh, Asset Managers. Uh, Lakshmi, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, a, uh, you know, this as Lata said, this was completely unexpected. Uh, OMO uh, sales. Uh, wh wh what's the bond market uh, reading of it? Obviously, yields have jumped quite substantially. I think uh, those gains from, uh, you know, the uh, India government bond inclusion is all gone. I think we are basically back at those levels once again. You think, uh, you know, these levels will stay? Uh, and uh, secondly. If you have an eye on stock markets also, should stock markets react in any way, especially banks and financials? Go on. Yeah, Sushant, a couple of things on to your first point. Uh, obviously, uh, there has been a knee-jerk reaction, no doubt, and it's very uh, rightly so, uh, given that you already have a second-half borrowing program, as Lata rightly alluded to, and plus you have an additional impending uh, OMO. You do not know the details, by the way, because if there is no calendar and there is no announcement of the date. Um, obviously, some sets of markets uh, do believe, uh, and, and that's reflected in the yields, that it will uh, play some crowding out effect in terms of incremental net demand. And uh, that's where we are seeing things right now. So 7.11 to 7.35, we've already seen a massive bump up. I think now the yields will have to consolidate, uh, probably come down 5, 10 basis points, go up. Uh, that's how it's going to be. And uh, from an, uh, you know, if you tie, try to tie this into the uh, larger markets, uh, you know, from an equity market, standpoint, uh, till the time the bond yields or the sovereign bond yields stabilize, it's very difficult to see the uh, corporate bond yields come down. And that clearly means that, uh, you know, the cost of borrowings are going to remain at elevated levels. And one will have to take that into consideration uh, when you are deploying money into the equity markets as well. I don't think markets have still uh, uh, fathomed that. So I think uh, there needs to be some bit of caution uh, even on the equity markets. Okay. And yeah, I haven't seen it in the NBFC stocks at least. Mm. Lakshmi, just very quickly, follow up. Uh, same question that we were asking, Lata. Why do you think they're doing it? Why an OMO? When anyway, system-wide liquidity is a little tight, right? So, you know, they have not mentioned that they are going to do it here and now. Intent seems to be clearly there. Uh, also, uh, we are going to see, uh, you know, starting because of the inclusion, we are going to see some uh, flows coming into the country. So I think it's going to be a combination uh, of either or. And also, if you listen to the governor, he clearly said that it is going to be depending on evolving situation. As of now, as is where it stands now, is there a case to do an OMO uh, immediately in the next few days? Uh, intuitively, no. So I think that is something which markets will have to take a breather. And given that, uh, you know, U.S. yields relentlessly were rising and our bond deals were, you know, kind of absolutely Teflon coated, I think that also some bit of give back is happening, despite the fact that U.S. yields have come down by about 15 basis points uh, from the peak. That's the point, Lakshmi. Do you think now, if there, if there is this huge amount of global funds who are going to buy our bonds willy-nilly, you are going to be scrutinized more, right? Uh, interest rate differentials, uh, fiscal policy, monetary policy, intent towards inflation. You just have to wear your credibility on your sleeve. Uh, would that be one reason? I don't deny that if you ask me uh, today for a foreign asset allocator, and I've just come back from my global roadshows, uh, if you look at a global asset allocator who is, say, not a benchmark hugger, for example, uh, the U.S. EUs are looking very, very lucrative. And uh, there is honestly no great incentive to immediately deploy money, at least into Indian bonds. So that definitely will be one of the criteria uh, which will define the shape of the yield going forward. Mm. Just one uh, quick question, Lakshmi. Uh, again, I'm kind of uh, tying it back to uh, uh, stocks. You know, if the aim is to encourage, take excess liquidity out of the system, encourage uh, banks to lend more freely, uh, should it, I mean, if they are able to achieve that aim, is it, is it negative? Because that would mean higher, uh, sort of higher yields uh, for, uh, for lenders and lower uh, costs for uh, depositors. I mean, freer credit for depositors. 
no they do not want liquidity to be in the surplus zone it is okay to Correct. be adequate it not be deficit it need not be higher as we hmm. speak right now the banking system liquidity is in the negative zone it may get into positive because of spending etc but i think that is when you will see and plus we need to keep in mind that we have festivities ahead so currency circulation is going to go up towards the end of the month so i think it's going to be a very very uh, you know multiple ball juggling act it's not going to be a quick fix solution either which way okay hmm. all right uh, we we'll leave it there lakshmi thank you very much for joining us uh, good uh, sort of conversation <laughs> Uh, and uh, we'll keep coming back to you for more perspective as this story develops. As uh, Reema but, uh, said, you know, yeah. at the moment you're anyway seeing a negative liquidity mm. because of advanced tax payment uh, follow yeah. through, as well as uh, no, festivals. Should season. we be so worried because it's still not? They haven't announced a calendar, for instance. No, they, won't. they won't. They won't. So it's only won't in the event of surplus liquidity. If we get to that. then they will come in and absorb so that almost so how we will get to uh, surplus liquidity because our, our government has collected the advanced taxes to spend you know mm. so it will come mm. back to the system there are no two ways about it mm. uh, salaries will be paid uh, you know I a whole lot of payments will come so by the first of every month the uh, money normally gushes in and you tell me if you're very sure that say on october 31st or on uh, uh november 15th the reserve bank is going to send probably 20000 probably 10000 when the auction comes today will you bid you know no jolly well they going to it's, it's pretty sell. much it's pretty much simply like uh, you know lock in uh, yeah. you know you ending yeah. you want a large block yeah. you know that somebody yeah. is going to sell and next week yeah. the week after you'll wait right yeah. and i think uh, so that's the point you'll be very jittery to buy yeah It may not, not be a great market. deal, but you know <laughs> how it is with liquidity. If you don't want to buy, even a small hesitation can take the price anywhere. All right, uh, Lata, thank you very much uh, for that perspective. We'll take a very quick commercial break here. Prakash, of course, is with us. We'll also have Mithun Ashwath of Kiva Advisors, uh, <coughs> who joins in uh, back on uh, stock markets. And of course, I mean there is still resilience there. A hundred points on the Nifty. Stay with us.
Welcome back. Well, the markets are moving to the high point of the day and a few stocks are moving very, very well. Pull up the intraday chart of TCS. The street is sensing maybe, I don't know the numbers, or they're sensing something else. But TCS is the stock that's moved to the high point of the day. So pull up the intraday chart out there. You're seeing a sudden spike out there on large volumes as well. So that's one stock you should look at. Besides that, from the broader markets, Goldrich Industries is one stock. You have Mahindra Holidays and BL Kashyap. The intraday charts of these stocks will tell you the way these stocks are moving. Sharp spike on all three counters. Prakash Tiwan is with us. Prakash, I wanted your view. I mean, you know, just trying to pull out uh, Godrej Industries or Mahindra or BL Kashyap. I mean, that's a smaller name out there. But do you have any view of any of these? No, I, I think I think the market's looking for opportunities in stocks that have yet not participated and it's the, the slightest of indication of any any positive development probably you know brings a lot of money into that so i mean can we, we you spoke about tcs there's enough going around saying there could be some other announcement along with the results in the forthcoming week uh, which which could be some corporate action that's positive so you know the market's probably looking for positive triggers in an environment where you probably don't have anything uh, major across the board so you know it, it'd be very stock specific but i i don't track bill cash the only thing i know is the repair that the company's undergone uh, in recent years and the kind of growth on the infrastructure side is probably helping them but beyond that i don't have any specific uh, inputs as yet all right uh, <clears throat> prakash thanks very much uh, for that a uh, good conversation is always look at uh, and as uh, nigel was also pointing out prakash was mentioned look at bl kashyap i mean uh, you know the chart uh, perhaps should come up on your screen uh, i think uh, you know it's up 100% this year uh, but <laughs> I say that casually because there are so many stocks which are up 100% but this is you know one of those contractors which uh, uh, back in the day in 2007 <coughs> 8 9 uh, got into trouble uh, you know overextended uh, what they were doing, pure contractors basically, uh, you know, went into the CDR process, etc. Now, of course, uh, things seem to be turning uh, for this one as well. They've been getting orders regularly, etc., from real estate companies uh, and infrastructure developers uh, as well. So, 69 on uh, BL Kashyap is, uh, at this point in time. 120 points is what we have on the Nifty, 19,670. Mithun Aswad is with us, managing partner at Kiva Advisors. Mithun, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time. You know, we were talking about bond deals earlier. There was Lata with us. There was, uh, uh, you know, a guest on bond markets as well, Lakshmi Iyer. And we were talking about, well, will stock markets and uh, banks, financials, etc., sit up and take notice if yields were to, uh, you know, stay at these elevated levels? So, to be fair, Lakshmi did say that maybe, you know, after the rise we've seen from 7.1, 7.11, to today's rise, things should consolidate a little bit, should not be one way. But your thoughts? Yeah, good afternoon, Prashant. Um, I think uh, with regards to the bond yield uh, movement today, I think uh, there's been a sharp uh, spike, mainly because of that news of that OMO sale. Uh, having said that, I think over the last uh, few days, uh, there have been positive uh, uh, events, at least from the US angle, uh, where you know the yields have gone up to close to 5% on the 30-year and 488 on the 10-year. And they've uh, actually come back down to about 4.7 uh, and 4.85. So there's been actually a rally in the U.S. bonds after a sharp uh, move up. Uh, also, in the last uh, few days, you've seen oil cool off from the 94, 95 level back to 83, 84. Uh, so I think these couple of events uh, have been positive. Uh, and I think our markets also rebounded when you saw oil and uh, U.S. yields kind of uh, come off. Otherwise, I think the U.S. yields were moving uh, uh, very sharply on the upside. Mithun, uh, hi. Just to sort of continue that point, uh, what is your take on financials? We've seen Q2 updates from most. Uh, and I think at least as far as growth is concerned, not too many lenders have complained or even NBFCs. I mean, Bajaj Finance managed a 30% uh, plus growth again on, uh, on total assets. So what would your strategy be with respect to buying financials, specifically NBFCs now? Yeah, hi. Um, I think, uh, Surbhi, uh, on the financial side, I think uh, uh, most of the reports, at least business reports which have come so far, uh, uh, seem like, you know, growth uh, continues to be quite uh, robust. Uh, I think the only challenge is on the margin front. Um, and, uh, you know, the expectation is that margins will now flatten out. There is not too much of scope of uh, uh, NIM expansion. Uh, so I think it should be uh, a reasonably good quarter since the base is still low. 
Uh, I think from the Q3, Q4 onwards, I think, you know, the base effect will start kicking in. And uh, uh, also, uh, there's been tremendous amount of growth in the last 12 months or so, even on the personal loan side. And some, about, uh, some amount of provisioning, uh, uh, which uh, may come about because of some sort of uh, uh, issues, which could crop up. Uh, nothing uh, currently, but I think maybe over the next 6 to 12 months, that could happen. Uh, so one needs to be uh, choosy in what type of uh, NBFCs or financials one needs to look at. Okay, all right. Hi, Mithun. Uh, you know, I believe you are quite positive on the hospitality space as well. And there are various triggers, right? Quarter three is seasonally strong. You have the G20 summit uh, that's ongoing. And uh, in fact, you have the Cricket World Cup 2023 as well. Give us a couple of stocks. How do you play this theme? Yeah. Uh, afternoon, Nigel. Um, I think, uh, uh, see, Q2 was where, uh, you know, a lot of uh, occupancy would have been up uh, for, you know, the hospitality sector uh, because of the G20, which uh, completed. Uh, Q3 onwards, you have uh, obviously the World Cup and uh, the festival season all bunched up together. So I think it should be a reasonably strong uh, uh, quarter for the hospitality space. Uh, within this space, you know, uh, I think... Uh, one idea which we've uh, held on to for quite a while, we have done some profit booking uh, uh, some time back, uh, is Thomas Hook. Uh, they, this is a company in the travel services space. They also have the resorts business uh, called Sterling Holidays and a very strong Forex business. Uh, also, uh, outbound traffic is also uh, you know inching up. So they should do well in both uh, inbound, inbound and outbound because inbound will be after a long time post-COVID that you will start seeing travelers from outside coming to India. Uh, they also would have benefited from the G20 meetings where you know quite a few of those meetings also were organized by uh, the company. Uh, so I think that, uh, that that is one idea that we continue to uh, uh, have. Mm. Uh, Mithun, have they said, uh, you know, when you chat with the management, uh, have they said anything about this TCS, which is going to be collected at source for travel now? Is it impacting spends in any way? Have things slowed down for a company like Thomas Cook on the back of that? And secondly, you wanted to get your thoughts in on Kalyan Jewelers. Is this a stock that you've ever looked at? Because for the last two quarters, uh, you know, it's been popping up on our radar on account of the strong numbers they reported. Q1 was one. And now even the Q2 business update, a 30% plus revenue growth. Uh, and the stock, of course, has doubled in more than a year. Um, so have you looked at Kalyan Jewelers? Yeah, afternoon, Rima. On the TCS part of it, uh, if you see from 1st of October, uh, TCS will be applicable uh, in excess of 7 lakhs per annum uh, and uh, per person. So, um, you know, the impact is not going to be very large because uh, most people's and the packages that uh, Thomas Cook would sell would be within that uh, 7 lakh bracket per person. And... Uh, the 5% uh, TCS, which is applicable right now, would continue. So the increased TCS will not uh, be applicable for uh, travelers. So the impact is not really large. Uh, it's a non-event because I think uh, the, the company and the industry had fought for this and this was uh, uh, implemented. Uh, as far as uh, Kalyan Jewelers is concerned, uh, sorry, Iman, this is something that uh, you know I have not looked at. Uh, okay, uh, sorry, textiles, uh, I think we've spoken about this in the past. Anything new you've done there, uh, Mithun? Uh, no, I think, uh, uh, Prashant, uh, there, you know, we are positive on that space, uh, prim primarily for a couple of reasons. I think uh, uh, last year, they were impacted by high cotton prices. Uh, there was a lot of inventory. Now, uh, as we go into the second, third quarters, uh, ahead of the uh, seasonal festivities, uh, their order books should also improve. Uh, domestically, also some of these companies uh, on the home textile and the garment side have doing reasonably well. Uh, so, you know, uh, companies on the home textile, I think last time I mentioned a company that, uh, you know, we are quite positive on is Arvind, which is on the uh, garments plus textiles plus the technical textile side. Also, another trigger, I think, for this space, uh, at least near term in terms of sentiment is potentially the signing of the UK-India uh, trade deal, uh, which may be uh, done by Diwali, is what uh, you know, I've been reading.
Okay, all right, Mithun. Always good hearing your thoughts. Thanks so much for stopping by, and thanks for sharing some of those themes as well. Thomas Cook was one. Arvind Limited as well. We discussed with uh, your due disclosures. Uh, wishing you a good evening ahead. Well, the markets are moving very, very well, and a lot of stocks are doing a thing of their own. So it's a good time to move to our favorite segment, the Street Chatter. Nimesh joins us to tell us what's the insight. Uh, Nimesh, good session. Another good century. Session, uh, good session. Good uh, session. And. and uh, Actually, the good part is it's led by financials. That was a big drag for the markets this yeah. week. But now it seems like they're participating on the upside. I guess the policy has also helped. It, it was a status quo, so that's led to a bit of a relief rally in the banking stocks. But not only that, the rate sensitivity, rate sensitivity has also done well in today's trade. All the real estate stocks are buzzing in trade uh, after the policy announcement. So that's been a bit of a uh, you know, big relief rally, so to speak, in that particular space. I guess, but you know, from a flow perspective, it's not like uh, there are strong flows which support this kind of a 100-point move. So, looks like large part of the rally is also a short covering rally in the financial name. So that's overall feedback. I guess from a technical point of view, again, 19,500 is a very important support on the town side. So that's that's a level, to, you know, uh, the bulls had to defend uh, for this momentum to continue. So that's that's to watch out for on the downside. And as I said, you know, the bit, a bit of participation is back in the broader markets as well. A lot of stocks are buzzing in trade. I guess some of the stocks may not even uh, give you a reason why they're buzzing, but that's a kind of mood, right? There is so much of domestic liquidity which is chasing the broader market. So that explains a big move in the broader markets today. Okay, all right. Let's get stock specific then. Nimesh, what are you picking up? So in terms of individual names, the first stock on my list today is Titan. Uh, within the consumer consumption names, this is one stock buzzing in trade on good volumes as well. I guess the city is expecting or anticipating a strong quarterly update from Titan, which which can come in a day or two. So that's the reason why that stock is buzzing in trade. The second stock is Godrej Industries. Uh, we normally don't talk about the stock, but huge volumes on that stock in today's set. The stock is locked at 20 percent upper circuit now. The last one I checked. Uh, again, you know, this is a holding company of Godrej Group, and still trading at a almost 50, 55 percent discount. Uh, you know, uh, so holding company discount. So, looks like the city is anticipating some sort of a corporate development in in Godrej Industries soon. So, that's the reason it's buzzing in trade. The third stock is PCBL. Uh, you know, again, good volumes uh, backed by HNI buyers is, is what I understand. And even there, the city is expecting some sort of a tie-up with regards to the EV business. So, that is something to track in PCBL going forward. And the last stock is Whirlpool. Been consolidating, soft in today's trade. But even today, in, a, in, a, in this market, there are strong buy flows. Uh, I understand one of the leading FI seems to be an active buyer. And again, uh, this is one contra bet which a lot of uh, funds seems to be buying off late. That is Whirlpool. Okay, all right, uh, Nimesh, thanks very much uh, for that uh, interesting list. As always, appreciate you joining in uh, with that. We'll take a quick commercial break here. We'll come back, we'll tell you what to buy or sell uh, today for a reverse trade when we come back on Monday. Uh, market's looking pretty good. We're back with that in just a bit.
Looks like we're going to end the session with a gain of more than 100 points. The Nifty's firm above 19,650, up 0.6% on the Nifty and the Sensex. There you have it. Uh, it's been a steady upward climbing uh, chart through the day. Midesh is here for a quick uh, you know, word on the day so far and a few BTSD calls for the weekend. Midesh. So, uh, one, I think the closing is quite good, uh, but yet, I think I would say the key test will come around 19725. But the other part on the stock side, uh, Mahindra Holidays, I think that's a stock which is broken into fresh swing high after about a two and a half, three weeks of consolidation. So, by there, we'll stop at 420 for targets of 455. And take a BTST on TCS, it's closing near the days high, uh, also, you know, market heavyweight. So, BTST here with a stop at about 36.10 for targets of 36.60. Okay, um, got that. Uh, thanks very much, Mitesh, for the calls. You have a great weekend, and we'll catch you with all the action again on Monday. Market's looking good. Uh, days high, pretty much, uh, practically on the Nifty, actually. And look at the stocks. Go Titan, for instance, is uh, sparkling getting into the weekend as we are also going to be entering the official festive season very, very soon. 3% rally on that stock. It's been a good mover today. Uh, Tata Consumer is having a good session for itself as well. So some of these consumer names are doing well. 3,300 titans. Sudeep Bandapadhyay is with us. He's group chairman at Initrade Capital. Sudeep, uh, good afternoon. You know what? I suddenly got nostalgic. I know Titan is a stock that you have liked for years. And I remember discussing Titan with you when you, it used to be around 900. And we used to discuss why it's not able to cross 1,000. I remember that. I think this is at least three years ago, this, this chatter. Uh, and look what's happened since then. 3,300? Uh, if you're a shareholder, then I'm sure anybody will be very happy. But would you advise buying a fresh now? Uh, hi, Surbhi. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think we've been tracking Titan for a very long time and we've been discussing Titan also uh, repeatedly at multiple uh, uh, occasions. Uh, look, I think the company has uh, uh, performed uh, stupendously. There's no doubt about it. They have changed a category. You know, the go organized gold retailing, I think uh, they did a uh, you know, phenomenal work and uh, they, they have a, a fantastic presence across all segments as far as, uh, you know, gold retailing is concerned, ornament retailing is concerned. Also, let's not forget the other smaller segments where they are in, eyewear uh, and also saris now. Uh, uh, you know, I think, and watches, of course, so I think all the other segments have started pick up, uh, picking up. In fact, last quarter, uh, the announcement when they came and the management spoke, I think it was very clearly coming out that all the other segments also have started performing. And, you know, recently we saw the listing of that, uh, you know, company, Kalamandir Sari company. Uh, they are a pure play Sari uh, uh, company um, uh, and operating in southern part of India. And they also got a decent reception in the market. Now, you know, if you compare that and consider that there is a, there's a business Inside Titan, which has a similar potential and similar, uh, you know, uh, uh, target segment, I think there is a fantastic opportunity. Look at, uh, you know, the Titan's watch segment and uh, Ethos. Now, look at how Ethos has performed and where the share price is. And, you know, Titan has a full-fledged uh, watch business sitting inside it. So, I think these multiple levers within Titan haven't yet been looked at seriously. We only talk about the gold and gold retail and gold ornament business. Uh, that has done very well, but the other businesses also will start, you know, uh, contributing very soon. I think all this combined makes it a fantastic play for somebody uh, who is looking at investing in uh, the market for a long term and wanting to build his portfolio. So, you know, it doesn't matter. Even if it's 3,300, it's good to get in if you have one year plus kind of time horizon in Titan. And of course, now is the time festive season coming in and whole lot of excitement, marriage season, festive season, all that is coming in. So why not Titan? Okay. Hi, Sudeep. Uh, let's talk about a couple of uh, large cap names then and underperform actually HUL. I look at the Nifty and I look at HUL. You know, year to date itself, it's been an underperformer. It's not done much. But now we're looking at themes, you know, if things are going to get a little bit uh, rocky, then large caps could be in focus. Would this be one such talk that you'll be looking at? Or do you think there is another opportunity? No, absolutely, Nigel. In fact, uh, HUL has been my favorite. And I believe that, uh, you know, the relative underperformance of HUL probably will get corrected in the next uh, 6 to 12 months. Uh, you know, if you compare HUL with ITC and look at the performance in the market I'm talking about, I think ITC has done uh, phenomenally well and moved up significantly. Uh, HUL has not really uh, rewarded uh, the shareholders in the last few months. 
but the fact remains that HOL is the largest FMCG company in the rural India. In rural India, they have a they have about thirty percent plus sales coming from rural India, and with expectation of rural consumption picking up. You know, uh, we know about the monsoon patchy and things like that. But the fact remains that we are heading into uh, multiple state elections and general election. The rural uh, income uh, will definitely get a boost one way or the other. And if that happens, I think the uh, company which will gain the most will be uh, HUL. And we have to we have to be at in, in HUL, invested in HUL to take benefit of that. So I have no doubt in my mind that HUL definitely continues and will offer a good opportunity in the near future. Uh, of course, uh, I recommend HUL for long term and investors can remain invested in the long term as well. Uh, Sudeep, do stay on. We need to get into a very short break. We'll come back. Nine minutes left for markets to close for the day and the week. Stay tuned.
Welcome back in the last leg of the show, just about five minutes to go and uh, we still have Sudeep with us. Sudeep, so as we get into the weekend, leave us with an idea uh, from mid-caps if you can. It's been an interesting ride. Uh, we've, we've seen the index consolidate, but you have some gainers on the screen once again today. IRB, Kalyan, we already spoke about Titan. Anything new on your radar? So we, I'm, I continue to remain bullish on uh, you know uh, domestic themes and infrastructure, construction and related sectors uh, definitely deserve attention. Uh, also, I, I, I continue to be positive on the textile space. So I'll talk about two. Uh, one is well-spun copper. I think this is one stock which hasn't really moved up. But my logic of uh, you know talking about it is not that it hasn't moved up. I think it's got a fantastic business. The challenges of the past are uh, are, are are in the past, and uh, I think uh, the, the the pipe business, which is where their main revenue comes from, is rapidly growing with infrastructure. The way the infrastructure build is happening, I think this stock can definitely be looked at for a medium to long term. The other company I want to talk about is uh, you know, Gokuldas Export. I think with the uh, UK India FTA likely to happen very soon, I think uh, this this stock should do uh, 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 give investors decent returns. Mm. In fact, uh, on the basis of this uh, India UK FTA, our previous speaker was also recommending Arvind uh, in the textile uh, space, saying that it could be a potential beneficiary with a lot of other factors like denims, technical textiles, etc. Um, Sudeep, uh, wanted to get your thoughts in on LTI Mindtree. Now, most of the IT stocks have done well in the last three months, but LTI Mindtree has been flat in the last three months. And very recently, Investec upgraded LTI Mindtree, and I just want to read out what they said. They're comparing it with Persistent. Persistent has delivered a 19% return over the past three months versus 0% for LTI Mindtree. They believe LTI Mindtree could report strong deal wins. The H2 outlook also picks up, but the stock is trading at 25 times forward multiple versus 32 times for persistent, while the difference in growth is not going to be that much. So just purely going by that compar uh, you know, comparison, uh, Investic uh, has upgraded LTI Mindtree, but this happened about you know two or three days back. So if we have Sudeep with us. Yeah, I think I think it's a it's a very good company. There's absolutely no doubt doubt about it, Rima. But I I I, I probably will uh, not get into this uh, you know uh, multiple comparison and invest. I think IT companies will have a challenging quarter uh, for the probably next two three quarters will continue to remain challenging. And under these circumstances, I will look at only niche IT players uh, like companies which are servicing. Uh, manufacturing industries like a persistent or somebody who's servicing tra travel and tourism like a, a raid gain technologies or Cognil or uh, or Coforge. So I think uh, this theme-based IT is what we have been recommending for the time being. Uh, in the long term, of course, LTI Mindtree is a great company, but to buy LTI Mindtree, probably the time will come in six months. Okay, time will come in six months. Uh, we leave it there. <clears throat> Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Sudeep. Appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18 as always. You know, we're going to end uh, the day with uh, exactly 100 points. So like 100 yesterday, 100 today. <clears throat> Although from the day's high, the market did come off not much. The high is 20,000. <clears> sorry. Uh, let me just look at the high. The high today is 19,675. Uh, so 30 points off. That's it. Nothing large. Uh, for the week, we end absolutely flat. 12-point change uh, Friday to Friday. Let's look at the uh, Nifty Bank. It's much more mixed, just a third of a percent. And exactly in the middle of the range is where we are we are ending. Uh, once again, at that, uh, we're closing at that 78% retracement of 44,364 uh, or so. So just 10 points under uh, that, that retracement uh, level. For the week, the Bank Nifty, by the way, is down half a percent. That's about 200 points of the Bank Nifty for the week, Friday to Friday. The mid-cap and small-cap indices, 0.6% uh, uh, on the mid-cap index, but down for the week. About 0.65% down for the week. And the small-cap index actually picked up pace in the last uh, 60 minutes of trade. We end almost 0.9% higher. And we're up here for the week as well by three quarters of a percent. Prima. Uh, well, uh, the notable losers include HUL. So HUL was quite soft in trade, the top nifty loser. But on the gaining side, the Bajaj twins, FinServe and Finance, rallied quite hard on the back of their plans to raise 10,000 crore rupees.
So that was clearly the star in today's trade. Okay, and mid-cap's not bad. I mean, the week was a little off for them, but towards the end, the index started performing at least in line with the benchmarks. Today's gainers include names like JNK Bank, Ujjivan, Small Finance Bank, 6% apiece on these. NBCC had a good run, as did IRB Infra. Count in uh, PFC and REC once again on the gainers uh, list. Uh, so after some profit taking, these stocks were back on the upside of the screen. PNB Gills had a great session today, about 18, uh, 16, 17% higher on it. Godridge Industries, 20% circuit as we are winding up for the, uh, for the day and for the week. Some profit taking on a couple of PSU uh, banks like IOB, Bank of India, Yuko Bank. So PSU banks is where some uh, money was taken off. But otherwise, not a bad day for the mid caps. And the Nifty going home with a 100 point gain, 19,651. Well, with that, it's a wrap on Closing Bell, but don't go anywhere. Our Friday special, Smart Money, comes up next.